Hello and welcome to my channel, The Way What Is Truth. Remember to like and subscribe and to comment down below. Now, I'm just chilling out right now and I was just thinking something to myself earlier on. And what triggered my motivation to do this video was all the times that I've been on nature reserves and parks where I've been on my own, as in without a dog, because obviously I don't own a dog. I only have the snaggletoothed gentleman, otherwise known as Sylvester, to keep me company in this house. I don't have any children. Uh, when I was in a relationship with someone, I went on parks and nature reserves and went to villages for walks and stuff. But most of the time when I've been on nature reserves and parks, I've been on my own. If I haven't been with my mum, that is, okay? And people are weary of men who are on their own, unless they're jogging or something, or they're going for a run or a jog, because then they see that person as being safe because they're there with a purpose. But if you're just walking at a steady, ordinary pace, uh, especially older women and, and old men too, uh, they tend to look at you with a little bit of suspicion. Not always. Some people are more trusting than others. It depends on the situation. Sometimes when I've been to my local nature reserve, for example, uh, not many people are there. So I can more or less get away with it. You know, I went for a jog earlier on on my own. Obviously, my mum wasn't with me. Um, so, yeah. Uh, the point I'm trying to make is that this world is living in fear. <laughs> I mean, as ridiculous as it sounds. The world has become full of anxiety, insecurities and fears. The world is an unstable place. Think of all the people that are being evicted, for example, from their homes because they can't afford the rent or they can't afford the mortgage or whatever the situation is. Think about what the cost of living crisis has done to people globally all around the world. This is something else we have to pray about. So let's pray for everyone's fears to be abated or everyone's fears to be soothed. By the Lord God Almighty, let's pray for this entire generation and every generation to come until God's return, for everyone's fears and anxieties and insecurities to be sorted out. Because God is not, uh, God never gave us a spirit of fear and anxiety and insecurity, but unfortunately we are living in a world that is full of fears, it's full of anxieties and it's full of insecurities, right? So, um... The world is in a constant state of instability. Think about the war between Russia and Ukraine. What I said earlier on, all the people who are living in hotels, uh, some people are, are literally moving from one property to another within a short period of time because they have nowhere, they, they have no settled accommodation for various reasons, right? Um, in the Far East, I think it's in China, there are some people living in box rooms where they literally... Uh, you know, um, it's hard to describe it, but we're talking about the smallest amount of room you can think of. Uh, I think the Corbin Coffin rooms or something like that, because it's literally just like a rectangular space with uh, like a few hooks to hang your bags on, a small mattress, a TV on, on the other side. And, and you literally, it, you know, it's like a rectangular capsule, just big enough for a body and to move around a bit. That's it, literally. Um... And there are people, so many people living in places that I know we're near big enough for what they need it for. There are people living in places that are not big enough for them, let alone a family, uh, for, for, for their girlfriends, their wives, their, their children, right? So let's pray for this entire generation and every generation to come of people who are living in uh places that aren't suitable for them either because they aren't hygienic enough there's damp there's rain pouring through the ceiling or whatever it is not fit for purpose um or the place is too small let's pray for this entire generation and every generation to come until the until the return of the lord jesus christ for as many people as possible to be took out of their squalid conditions and these homes that are not suitable for them, either because they're too small or the condition of these homes are not good enough. And let's pray for these people to go to, to have better lives and to move into better places. Let's pray for miracles to break out, right? And um, the, the, uh, because of the cost of living crisis, so many people are living in places that are not suitable for them, that aren't good enough for them. Um... The world is in such an insecure state 
it's crazy. I mean, families have family members that have diseases. Um, people are going through divorces. Think of all the people with terminal diseases. They have to be prayed for. There, there are mums out there with terminal cancer who are... You know, I mean, I know someone in London, for example. I'm not going to tell you her name, but she's someone who I know through a friend of the family, right? She has terminal cancer. She has blood cancer, actually. I think it's called sarcoma. It's a terminal blood cancer, which can take a few years before it will kill you off, right? And she's got five sons. I'm not even joking. And we're all young. We're all under the age of 13. But there's the youngest and then there's one who's 12 or 13, I think. Or maybe a little bit younger than that. Maybe 10 or 11. Something like that. Um, anyway, she has five of them. Right? And she's got this terminal cancer. She's on her own. She had a bad relationship with someone. He's actually a sociopath. The police pretty much said that. He is. You know, he's mentally ill. Uh He's a clever guy, he earns good money with what he does, he's into finance, but I'm not here to gossip about anyone and what he's done and what sort of person he is, but pray for her. In fact, you know what, I'm going to tell you her name, there's no harm in it, her name's Caroline Cohen, right? And she is the daughter of my mum's ex-partner who lives in London, his name is Jack Cohen, so pray for Jack Cohen and pray for Caroline Cohen. Uh, Jack himself has a condition called PAD. It's like a... It stands for... Um, path, path... I think it's... Peripheral Arterial Disease. But you'll have to forgive me if I pronounce that wrong. But yeah, definitely check it out. PAD. Uh, it's caused by uh, by fatty deposits in the bloodstream, I believe. Yeah, and and you know, like, I don't know the ins and outs of it, but yeah, it's very serious. And people that have got it can literally die any time. So you know, uh, pray for Jack and pray for Caroline Cohen as well, who has blood cancer and those five boys to bring up. That's just an example of what some people are going through. She doesn't know how much longer she's got left to live. But she's struggling on for the sake of her boys. That, that unfortunately she had with that man who is a sociopath. He's mentally ill, right? Um, but she had them with him nonetheless because we're human. We make mistakes, right? So pray for her. I mean, she might be dead within the next two to three years. Let's pray right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ for God to heal her of that cancer and give her a second chance in life for the sake of her sons. Let's pray for her salvation. Let's pray for Jack Cohen's salvation and Caroline Cohen's salvation and for the salvation of her boys. Let's pray for God's Holy Spirit and his loyal faithful angels to invade the lives of Jack Cohen, Caroline Cohen and her sons as well. But, that's, but, but the reason why I mentioned it about Caroline Cohen with the blood cancer who's struggling away with these boys uh, is just to give you an idea of what some people are going through. Can you imagine that? Got terminal cancer. She doesn't know how much longer she's got left to live. And she's got young boys. Um, who are between the age of five and... I think they're like... I think the youngest is six or seven. And the eldest is like ten or eleven. Something like that. I, I, I forget now. But they're all young, you know. Um, that just gives you an idea. And then there are people in even worse situations than that. But that's pretty bad. That's bad enough. Being a mum who's got terminal cancer and uh, is doing her best by her sons. Uh, not only that, but she's in the process of trying to find a new property now as well. Because her current landlord, uh, believe it or not, has given her notice. Uh, she, I mean, she's known for weeks that she's got to move. Months, actually, I think now. I think it's been a good two to three months she's known. So pray for her to find a good permanent residency as well. And let's just pray for this whole world. The world is in a right old state. Some people have it good in life. Some people don't have any financial problems. But I think the vast majority of people do now. But uh, some people are blessed. Um, sometimes it's through hard work. Some 
people are gifted intellectually so they're very good at studying so they end up with good jobs that pay well they get good careers going on some people are born into money you know how it is uh, some people come from nothing and end up becoming a success you get all different people out there but this cost of living crisis is something that's affected all of us we have to pray because it's a huge burden for so many people young couples you know i've heard young couples in the street arguing I saw a young man a few weeks ago uh, get into his car. Uh, I'm not going to bother telling you what he said, but he swore and he fell out of his girlfriend and he sped off with his tyres screeching away. And uh, Not too far from where my mum lives, actually. So, yeah, that's just one example. Young couples arguing. And when couples argue, more often than not, if it's not something like infidelity or something like that, then it's to do with financial problems or something or some sort of disagreement falling out. But usually it's to do with money, especially when it comes to young couples. That's probably the number one reason I'm guessing why young couples argue because of money, financial problems, unemployment, all that stuff. And uh, drop a comment down below and tell me what you think we should pray about as well, because I've mentioned... All sorts of things. Oh yeah, let, let, let's pray for the homeless as well. There's so many homeless and people that are becoming homeless because of this financial crisis. And even before this um, financial crisis that's hit the world, there was always homelessness and unemployment. And, and the cost of living, especially in the UK, I don't know about where you may be living right now, but the UK has always had a relatively high cost of, uh, uh, cost of living. Not the highest in the world, but it's up there. It's well above average, the cost of living, definitely. Yeah, if you look up the cost of living index online, you'll find that the UK is up there. It's up there. I think it's probably like, I think Switzerland might be the number one. I'm not sure, but the UK isn't far off from the top. Let's put it that way. It's not. It's pretty high, the cost of living is here. Um, my dad said years ago that really... Uh, to keep a, like a two or three bedroomed house over your head, you need two people working. Most of the time, it depends on the situation and the circumstances, but yeah, usually you need two people working or one person who's got a, a, a well-paid job. Yeah, either one person who's got a well-paid job or two people. You know how it is. The money's got to come from somewhere. So yeah, um, I don't want to babble on and on and on. So I'm just going to take a few moments to think right now to see if there's anything I haven't already mentioned. So let's pray for the homeless, all those with terminal diseases, all those who are living in places that aren't good enough for them either because the place is too small or it's squalid conditions like flats, apartments, houses with damp, for example. Uh, you won't believe the sort of conditions some people have got to live in. And I'm blessed in so many ways. I know I've complained about my loneliness and lack of friends and, and being a lifelong loner in various videos and that but i'm blessed in other ways though this is it god has been very gracious and merciful towards me and um let's pray for people to turn to god a lot of people have lost faith you know you know something a lot of people that call themselves atheists and agnostics you know they don't really mean any harm by it they're just so many people are so disillusioned now especially with the way the world is so yeah, let's pray for positivity. Let's pray for people to become more positive. Let's pray for God's Holy Spirit to be unleashed, to help people with their financial problems, for as many people as possible to be cured of their terminal diseases, especially those of children. Let's pray for the children as well, because children are being born into a world where most of the time they're not being taught the difference between right and wrong. Uh, they're surrounded by bad influences from the music industry, the film industry, the video game industry is full of bad influences as well to one extent or another. And a lot of it is that these are just temporary distractions and most people are not being brought up to be Christians, are, are they? So it's pot luck as to whether or not they're ever going to be saved or ever come to Christ. <laughs> So we have to pray for the children, the young people and the old people and everyone in between, this entire generation and every generation to come, to be delivered and to be made secure and strong in Christ and to be helped of all of their personal life problems, whatever they may be, whether it's mental health, physical health, emotional health, um, 
financial problems, whatever it is, family problems. You know, a lot of people have had their reputations ruined, for example. So let's pray for their reputations to be restored, okay? If they've had their reputations wrongly destroyed and ruined, that is. Let's also pray for all the falsely imprisoned people who are being falsely accused and falsely imprisoned and let's pray for justice where there is no justice as well there's a lot of injustice in this world there's a lot of corruption let's pray for there to be justice where there is none as well and uh, yeah so i hope and pray that you're all well so let's pray in this insecure fearful anxious world that we're living in right now for god's stability to take over and his love and his mercy and his grace to take over and for him to help as many people as possible in whatever difficult situations they are in for this entire generation and every to come. Because God, sometimes we limit God. Let's not limit him. We're supposed to be prayer warriors in Christ, don't forget. Anyway, bye bye and take care.